We all learn as kids that it is very unpleasant to be embarrassed, and most of us carry a fear of embarrassment with us throughout our lives. And I think actually if you were to dig down kind of to the root of where that fear comes from, and it's usually tied in with a fear of rejection, then actually in a way it's really a very logical fear. We are a very social species, and if you were to really tank your reputation somehow, you could lose very important relationships, or potentially even your work. So there are some actual stakes involved. That said, there's a real basis for someone who has a serious fear of heights as well. Because yes, theoretically, if you were to fall off the top of a tall building, you could die. But the same way someone with a real phobia of heights might really limit their lives and say, not go to a meeting because it was on the 10th floor of a building, then in just that way, many of us really live narrower lives or constrict ourselves because we're afraid of being embarrassed. And this can be so limiting and really keep us from trying new things or taking risks talking to someone or striking up a conversation because we're not sure how it will go, we don't want to be rejected, and if we can face that fear a little bit, it really will open up a lot of options for us in our lives. It can also help make daily living a little bit easier because there is no way to guarantee you will never be embarrassed unless you commit to never having another conversation with another person again. <laughs> which most of us are not, hopefully, in a position to do. So for myself, I have a degree in theater, which practically means that I spent the better part of three years of my life every day going to class, participating in these crazy kind of vulnerable exercises, risking looking very crazy and strange, and theater gets a reputation for making everyone do absurd exercises, for a good reason, it's very merited. And in order for it to be possible at all, our professors had to make it very clear that not only was it okay to take risks, to do something that might not work or might look silly, but it was really critical and very necessary in order not only to push the limits of our own ability to express and create, but it was really necessary in order to get the best outcome, maybe for a choice within a scene or, or how we decided to build a character. They kept emphasizing the idea that your first attempt would usually not be the best. It would usually be the second or the fourth or the eighth. Keep trying new things. And this was an amazing time in my life. And looking back on it now, I can see that I've grown so much. I mean, my self-confidence has gone up and up and up. And now in my work, I spend time teaching and speaking or performing in different ways. And I love being able to know that I can take risks and try new things and that it's a good thing. And I have that really very much in my mind now. And it's a very liberating concept. The other thing I learned from my time in theater is that if something embarrassing happens or we say something and it comes out the wrong way or we do something foolish, other people generally care to the extent that we do. And I think most of us know this to some extent because we've probably experienced having a conversation with someone and seeing them say something a little bit awkward or embarrassing and become very self-conscious, right? And as they start to feel nervous and self-conscious, we start to feel nervous and self-conscious and sometimes the whole room will. But on the flip side, if we say something wrong or we do something embarrassing and we just kind of acknowledge it and move on, we just sort of roll with it, then it just, it just is very smooth and other people can kind of go with it too and usually everyone forgets about it, like instantly. I think we end up with this concept in our minds that really confident people, really great speakers don't make mistakes, that they're so used to it, they don't say anything that's wrong or they don't do anything that's embarrassing. And it may be true, they get a little better at not saying embarrassing things, but I think for the most part, what they're really good at is rolling with it, right? And if you keep a sharp eye out for someone who's really confident or a public speaker, you can see them make mistakes. You can actually hear it a lot in podcasts too, because those are conversations in real time, and they will just catch it and correct it. And so when we hear someone make a mistake like that, we don't think the worse of them, partly because they don't try to justify it over and over again and just like pretend they didn't make the mistake. The key here is to acknowledge it and say, oh, whoops, that came out wrong. That's not what I meant. What I meant to say was this and they fix it. So being able to adopt this attitude of sort of taking ourselves a little bit less seriously, knowing that we will make mistakes, we will say something wrong, we will do something that appears foolish, but to know that it's okay, if we can take ourselves a little less seriously and kind of own our mistakes and then move on with our lives, it makes it much easier for us. And it's also a little bit more generous to our audience. 
we don't make whoever we're talking to sort of like feel our awkwardness. We're sort of saying, no, I know that was me, my bad. Sorry, let's move along. And it's a very liberating and freeing way of approaching work and conversations and life in general. Another very worthwhile thing to realize is that generally if we want to try something new and some people might judge us for it or make comments about it, those people who would are usually lacking in self-confidence themselves. And I see this very clearly in my time teaching high school students. I teach a high school theater course. So naturally, I'm always pushing the students to do new exercises, try things that maybe feel strange to them or a little uncomfortable and outside their comfort zone. And most of them, you know, will kind of come to the task and say, okay, this feels weird and silly, but let's try it out. But every once in a while, I'll get a student or two who's very cool. They have like their hair swooped to the side. They're kind of aloof and quiet. And this class is really hard for them and they don't, they don't want to participate because it feels too risky to them, right? And so they'll kind of be a little bit judgmental of the exercise or maybe judgmental of their fellow students. And it's so interesting watching because it's really transparent as an adult outside of this exercise and these social dynamics. It's really obvious to me that that student is the one lacking in self-confidence, right? And you can see this even with your peers too. I realize that I tend to think more highly of people if they're willing to take a risk than if they're too afraid to try it. Jason Comley is a man who set out very deliberately to give himself the task of being rejected somehow for a hundred days in a row. And maybe some of you have heard of him because now he's a speaker and I believe he's written a book and he's built a whole career out of the experience he had with this. What happened was he found himself at a point in life where he was feeling really paralyzed by his fear of rejection. He'd had a terrible experience, been a little traumatized by it, and he didn't know how to move on. And he couldn't really go out in life and in the world because he was feeling too stuck with this fear. And he, he realized that this was his experience and he decided to face the fear itself. So he set out for 100 days to be somehow deliberately rejected every day. So for instance, he would go up to a stranger in the parking lot and ask them for a ride across town. And then when this person said no, he was pleased because it was his goal. He was trying to get rejected. So he completely took this fear and flipped it on its head. And it was actually a really brilliant approach because he was doing several things. First off, he was essentially prescribing himself with exposure therapy, which is a common psychological technique. If you have like a phobia of snakes, what you don't want to have happen is to encounter a snake when you're totally unprepared out of the blue and be really traumatized by that experience. So what they will do is say, okay, we're going to very safely, deliberately, and in a very controlled environment, slowly expose you to snakes so that you can be around them, knowing that they can't touch you or come near you, and you can start to get over this fear. And that does a couple things. Of course, it helps just by being around the thing and finding that you don't immediately get bit and die. So for him, it helped to be rejected and find that his life went on as normal. He was fine. It was okay. But it's also really good because you're taking this fear and you're handling it from an internal locus of control as opposed to an external one. So you feel like you have some control. You're making a choice in the situation as opposed to just being surprised by it and really taken off guard. But the one other thing he was doing was moving from an outcome-based approach to a process-based one. And he was essentially redefining what his goal was. For most of us, success or failure would be defined by whether or not you could get the person to say yes, right? If you have a fear of rejection, then you succeed if they say yes. But we don't ultimately have control on what other people do. And in Comley's experiment, he was moving to a process-based definition of success. So he would succeed if he tried. If he did the action of asking someone the risky thing, then he had succeeded. And sometimes people said yes, and he wasn't even rejected. And he got a lot of like crazy, cool, amazing stories from that as well. But this concept of setting our definition of success in the, in the process as opposed to the outcome is a very powerful tool and we can apply it in many ways, but it's very useful for facing our fears. If we can task ourselves with the objective of doing something that scares us, whether or not we succeed in the thing itself. We call it a success because of the effort we put in, then that really is a game changer when it comes to having a growth mindset and learning to do new things or overcoming something that's really holding us back. 
So in conclusion, there are at least three main reasons why it's worthwhile to try and overcome our fear of embarrassment. The first being that it expands our life options. We're free to try new things and have broader experiences if we're okay being wrong or looking foolish. It makes daily life a little bit easier because we can learn to roll with the punches and move kind of more seamlessly through awkward conversations if we're not so afraid of them. And finally, it's really critical for being able to find the best possible outcome, right? A lot of great discoveries and people who have lived really big, amazing lives took a lot of risks, handled a lot of rejection, and they just kept going. So it's really important, even in whatever our work may be, to be able to put forth ideas that could be wrong, to try things that might not work, and risk looking foolish in order to find the best outcome. Then some strategies for doing this are to keep in mind that others usually care as much as we give them permission to, that if we can take ourselves a little less seriously, kind of acknowledge mistakes and laugh them off, that it's easier for them and us in potentially embarrassing situations, that the people who are likely to be a little critical or judgmental of new ideas or actions uh, are probably lacking in self-confidence themselves and may not be the people we particularly need to worry about or wanna surround ourselves with anyway. And if we really wanna make progress in, in handling this fear or growing in self-confidence, that we can apply some exposure therapy to ourselves and try something new and risky where we know we won't succeed all the time, but put it in a process rather than an outcome definition of success and know that as long as we're trying, as long as we're pushing ourselves and battling against our own fears, that that is what defines our success. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.